Welcome to Liberty Explained. We are your guide to libertarianism. Your hosts are Chris Spangle, Julia Geyer, and Levy Rainey. We're going to break down a complicated movement and an ideology, helping you understand what libertarianism is all about and uh, who's who, what's what, what's going on, what's wrong with the Libertarian Party, all that good stuff. And we're going to solicit your questions, so send in your questions to ask at wearelibertarians.com. And uh, we'll answer your questions, your friends' questions, whatever. This podcast is produced by the We Are Libertarians Network. My name is Chris Spangle. I am the host of We Are Libertarians and Liberty Explained. And my co-hosts for this episode are Julia Geyer and Levy Rainey. Julia, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. And Levy, hello. Hi, I'm still hungry, in case you're wondering. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> we record these all like in a row so we're on a, a zoom call basically for three hours and nuttiness takes place in between the breaks and i should really like cut that up julia's like little best of clips for our instagram I know, we should those are, people love those things i know levy's quite the character i know we'd be so funny <laughs> um, this is what we're going to be talking about why can't Libertarian Party presidential candidates get into the presidential debates? You're going to be blown away by this. The answer is corruption <laughs> and collusion, Shocker. a bamboozling by the two parties. What? Yes, Levy, when it comes to the national presidential debates. If you were to take a guess, like who puts on the presidential debates? If you know, pretend you don't know. Who would you guess put on the presidential debates when you were a kid? Who like host them? Who broadcast yeah, like, them? You're, yeah, you just tune in and you're like, oh, okay, the debate's on. Who who organized this? I've never thought. I'm going to say like a big advertising company like Colgate. <laughs> or Julia, what did you ever, what did you think? Honestly, when I was young, I never thought about it. I thought it was just like hosted on a channel. Right. You know, it didn't occur to me that it was anything other than like like every other show. There's a production company. There's, you know, but I didn't think it was how it is. <laughs> what it is. And I always thought it was media outlets, right? Like the journalists, CNN puts it on. It's a Wolf Blitzer's up there. In reality, the commission on the committee on presidential debates is a quote unquote nonpartisan nonprofit organization and they are basically a an organization formed by the republicans and the democrats they have republican and democratic commissioners the head of the executive director is a longtime uh, po- politic i think she worked for the republican party the board members are all republicans and democrats And the two parties actually put together the commission that makes up the uh, the debate. So, um, they, Julia, why don't you tell us like when did this when did this actually take place? Um, Well, this was in direct response to the 1980 presidential election, where third parties took over eight percent of the vote, and it backfired in 1992 when Ross Perot took almost 20 percent of the popular vote as an independent. Yeah, and so in that race, Jimmy Carter was president, Ronald Reagan was challenging him, and there was a third-party candidate, I believe his name was Jack Anderson, and he was starting to move in on the poll numbers of Jimmy Carter. And so Jimmy Carter said, I'm not going to share debate stage with the third-party candidate and Ronald Reagan. So Ronald Reagan just said, fine, and had the debate with the third-party candidate. And then after that, they just said, we can't have this. Um, and so then I believe the actual commission was formed in 1988, eventually after there was another, uh, it was 1987, excuse me, when it was formed because there was another third party insurgency in 84, but then in Ross Perot's run in 92, the committee on presidential debates had to have him in there. And then they instituted a rule that said 15% of the polls or else you can't be a part of the debates which excluded most third-party candidates to this day. And here's the surprise part. The five polling firms that they base that off of, none of them include the presidential candidates in their polling for the the Libertarian Party or Green Party. So the two parties colluded in 1988 to form this commission. Then in 1992, when somebody actually broke through and got on, they fixed that the next year. And then they exclude them 
But isn't this the definition of shady politics, Levy? Okay, so how do you, how is there ever going to be a third party debating with them? Like, how do you, where's the hope in this? This is terrible. That's the idea. So where do they get their money? Well, there are uh, six secretive donors that nobody knows the donors of. Uh, Anheuser-Busch has donated some. PepsiCo has donated in the past. Uh, Nobody knows who actually funds these debates. But they maintain a government tax exempt status and they do none of the required work for a nonprofit necessary to retain that title. And uh, actually, when Jill Stein attended, they they detained a major party candidate for eight hours after she attempted to access the debate stage. And they tried to kick Ralph Nader out when he ran as a third party candidate just to show up to try and get some of the press. And they do everything they can, not even to allow the third party candidates to attend the debate. I did not know this. Yeah. So messed up. Yeah. So we are libertarians. The the flagship show. We actually just did an episode on this, where we go even deeper into some of this stuff. Really um, good. That, thank that you very much. Good episode. I did not listen because I'm a fake fan. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> so you know, Julia, what are some Levy's expressing exasperation? What are some ways that we can fight this? Um, I mean, I think the best thing to do is challenge the sponsors um, as three major corporate interests ended their sponsorship in 2012 after public pressure due to non-inclusionary inclusionary tactics preventing third party voices from participating. And in 2020, the corporate sponsors include Anheuser-Busch, AARP, the Howard G. Buffett Foundation, the Culver Fund, the National Governors Association and Phillips. So. I feel like this falls into the line of vote with your wallet. You know, all these companies that are sponsoring um, this really corrupt debate commission, just stop, stop giving them your money. That's the best thing you can do. I think. Yeah. I mean, I and Gary Johnson. But- yeah. Libertarian party candidates have tried to sue their way in and they were told that they're a nonpartisan organization and he just didn't meet the requirements. But now the debate commission in response to president Donald Trump withdrawing from the debate, he cut for those of you listening far in the future, president Donald Trump, he was president. If you're listening to this on a, in a future century or on another planet, we'll explain how that happened on some other show, but uh, he caught COVID and Nobody wanted to be in a room with him, and he said, well, and they said, all right, we'll do the debate, but it has to be virtual. We'll do it over Zoom, and he said, I'm not coming, and so Joe Biden said, well, then I'm not coming either if he's not going to follow the rules, and then he said, wait a minute, I will do it, and then the Commission on Presidential Debate said, we're not going to do it if you're not going to follow the rules because you you didn't two weeks ago. And so now all these MAGA Republicans are screaming. Republicans are screaming for the eradication of this institution and they're nonpartisan. And Bob Dole, the former presidential candidate and senator, is tweeting out that he knows all the Republican commissioners on the on the debate. And it's not truly bipartisan because all of them are opposing Trump and it's not fair. And the moderator is tweeting out, you know, pro Biden things. And you know what? There's some things about Donald Trump that he really knows how to destroy an institution. And so maybe we may get lucky and the Committee on Presidential Debates will uh, be destroyed as an institution and it will return to the stewardship of the League of Women Voters who did an excellent job with it. And so uh, that is what libertarians would like to see happen. And, you know, this is the same with ballot access laws and basically the and drawing maps and gerrymandering. Republicans and Democrats shouldn't be allowed. Pepsi and Coke should not be allowed to write the rules for all colas. Poor RC Cola needs a chance to let Fago in there, you know, and we let Republicans and Democrats write up all these rules and it's wrong. It's really wrong. And I, I think that like when you say we let them do this, like so many people don't know about this. Right. I mean, I didn't know the, the depth of it until I listened to that podcast that you guys just put out um, on We Are Libertarians. And I was like, oh my God. And I think that I posted it on my Instagram and I got a lot of people responding, being like shocked and upset about it. And I think if more people, obviously, doesn't that go to say with 
with almost everything that's going on these days. But if more people knew um, the, the ins and outs of how wrong it is, you know, I think. They'll take action. They'll start boycotting and they'll start demanding something different. Bad press can destroy this thing. And so please, we'll put the show notes for that other episode in there and you can listen and go even more in depth. But spread the word. That's the most powerful thing that you could do is the, you have a publishing tool in social media to tell your friends. And then they'll go, this is all corrupt as hell anyways. We want something different. Yeah. So, Yes, let's hear right. it. Well, thank you very much for watching and listening to Liberty Explained. If you're not on the Instagram, you can watch it on YouTube, watch it on Facebook, watch it on Instagram, listen on podcasts. We're everywhere. Uh, so please spread the word with this stuff. Levy, Julia, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. And listener, thank you so much as well. And we'll see you soon in the future.